political life, sometimes people casually occur, accuse each other of being dishonest. But if, if colleagues of ours believe I am lying about when I made this decision, please urge them to contact me privately so we can have a conversation about this. All I can do is tell you again, the decision was made after that because I didn't know what was going to happen in that interview. She maybe lied during the interview in a way we could prove. Let me finish. I would also urge you to tell me what tools we have as prosecutors and investigators to kick out of an interview someone that the subject says is their lawyer. That's not my point. The interview never should have taken place if you were going to allow the central witnesses that you needed to prove the case to sit there and listen to the testimony that the subject was going to give. It never happens. It never happened to you and it's never happened to me or any other prosecutor that I met. And I know you've defended the people that were involved in this as being great, but if it's never happened, I wonder why this is a case of first precedent with respect to that practice that you and I have never seen in our careers. You and I don't control the universe of what's happened. I suspect it's very unusual. A key fact, though, that maybe is leading to some confusion here is we had already concluded we didn't have a prosecutable case against Heather Samuelson or Cheryl Mills at that point. If they were targets of our investigation, maybe we would have canceled the interview. But frankly, our focus was on the subject. The subject at that point was Hillary Clinton. All right, let me move on. Um, according to the FBI's own documents, uh, Paul Combetta was in his first interview on February the 18th, told FBI agents that he had no knowledge about the preservation order for the Clinton emails, correct? I don't know the dates of that, but it, I'm sure it's in the 302. Okay, but then two and a half months later on May the 3rd, his second interview, he made a 180 degree turn. And he admitted that in fact he was aware of the preservation order, and he was aware of the fact that that meant that he shouldn't disturb the Clinton emails, correct? Yep. Okay, well then I need your help again here because when I was at the J Department of Justice, your reward for lying to federal agents was an 18 U.S.C. 1001 charge or potential obstruction of justice charge. It wasn't immunity. Depends on where you're trying to go with the investigation. It's a low-level guy. You're trying to move up in the chain. You might think about it differently. What? He, he lied to an FBI agent. You don't think that's important? Oh, it's very important. It happens all the time. Unfortunately, it's very, very important. Sometimes you prosecute that person and end their cooperation. Sometimes you try and sign them up. But if they lie to an FBI agent after they're given immunity, they violated the terms of their immunity agreement. Oh, sure. After. After the agreement. And so that's my point. He shouldn't have immunity anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. I may have misunderstood you. He lied to us before he came clean under the immunity agreement and admitted that he had, had deleted the emails. No, not according to the FBI's documents. He had the immunity agreement in December of 2015. These interviews took place in February and March uh, and May of this year, 2016. Combetta? Combetta. Okay, then I'm, I'm, then, I'm, then I'm confused and misremembering, but I don't think that's right. Okay. Everything. Do you think that any laws were broken by Hillary Clinton or her lawyers? Do I think that any laws were broken? Yeah. I don't think there's evidence to establish that. Okay. Well, I think you're making my point when you say there's no evidence to establish that. Maybe not in the way she handled classified information, but with respect to obstruction of justice. And you've got a pen here. I just want to make sure the record's clear about the evidence that you didn't have, that you can't use to prove. So this comes from the FBI's own report. It says that the FBI didn't have the Clinton's personal Apple server used for Hillary Clinton work emails. That was never located, so the FBI could never examine it. An Apple MacBook laptop and thumb drive that contained Hillary Clinton's email archives was lost, so the FBI never examined that. Two BlackBerry devices provided the FBI didn't have SIM cards or SD data cards. Thirteen Hillary Clinton personal mobile devices were lost, discarded, or destroyed with a hammer, so the FBI clearly didn't examine those. Various server backups were deleted over time, so the FBI didn't examine that. After the State Department and my colleague Mr. Gowdy here notified Ms. Clinton that her records would be sought by the Benghazi Committee, Copies of her emails on the laptops of both of her lawyers, Cheryl Mills and Harold Mills, uh, and Heather Samuelson, were wiped clean with bleach bits, so the FBI didn't review that. After those emails were subpoenaed, Hillary Clinton's email archive was also permanently deleted from the Platte River Network with bleach bit, so the FBI didn't review that. And also after the subpoena, backups of the Platte River server were manually deleted. Now, Director, Hopefully that list is substantially accurate because it comes from your own documents. My question to you is this. A any one of those in that very, very long list to me says obstruction of justice. Collectively, they scream obst obstruction of justice. And to ignore them, I think, really allows not just reasonable prosecutors, but reasonable people to believe that maybe the decision on this was made a long time ago not to prosecute Hillary Clinton. 